What's going on guys, Jake here with Uncommon EDC, and today I'm checking out a couple knives from Damn Designs, and the reason I'm checking them out together is uh, they're basically the same knife, they're different models, but the way Damn Designs does their models is they'll have several with the exact same kind of handles, but different blades, and each different blade style is a different model, and so... Um, even though they're different models, they're remarkably similar, so I didn't think it made sense to make two videos on almost the exact same knife. Um, but the models I'm looking at today are the Ryu in black and the Ghoul in white. And um, they're not in here, actually. Um, I already opened these up and I've been playing around with them. I just kind of put the boxes here because some people like to see kind of what the packaging looks like. Nothing special inside. In fact, um, it came with you know, their standard fare, which is just a cleaning cloth um, with their logo and website on it, as well as some foam and uh, the knives themselves were kind of plastic wrapped and like a sealed plastic wrap. Um, so nothing too crazy. But the first one we're going to take a look at is the Ryu. Again, I got this one in black. This is a G10 handle um, and they are front flippers. Uh, this blade steel is 14C28N on both of these. And uh, as you can see, it's just kind of a modified Tonto blade on the uh, Ryu. And uh, two inch blade, three inch handle, five inches overall, so super compact. And um, I don't think I mentioned yet, but these are super, super budget friendly. Um, each of these are $45, um, which is amazing for kind of what you're getting. The action is really nice on these. Um, liner lock, reversible pocket clip, um, and as you can see, that's kind of a set in, well, maybe you can't see, I don't know, um, set into the G10 handles. And so on the back side, there's this little inlay placeholder so that if you do reverse it, you can just kind of flip it to the other side and you don't have like that awkward divot in the handle. Um, the pivots on these are super nice. Um, just kind of like a hexagon pattern. And then obviously, I think a T6 maybe on the back. Um, don't quote me on that, um, but they are front flippers. This is my first um, front flipper, I think. Um, I have plenty of regular flippers, but no other front flippers, but picked it up really quick. Um, super fidgety and fun to play with, uh, especially this one in particular, which you'll see why I say that in a few, um, but really easy to get the hang of. Um, it can fail, but it's pretty difficult, but if you, I mean, obviously if you like barely push it out, you can slow roll it. Um, but if you put any sort of force behind it, it's going to fly out of there. Um, so definitely failable, but not something that I would worry about if you're putting any sort of force behind there. And then the other one I picked up was the Ghoul. And the Ghoul I got in white, uh, which um, is going to get dirty for sure. And uh, that's okay. I kind of expected that. Um, the main reason I got them in different colors was just so I can tell them apart. Um, from the outside since closed they look exactly the same but um i'm not too worried about it getting dirty anyway and so this is exactly the same except for it's got the sheep's foot blade also sandvik uh, 14 c28 and a uh, two inch blade three inch handle and five inches overall um, both of them weigh at 2.8 ounces so literally exactly the same in every way um, except for this blade and obviously the color as well but they both come in black or white so um, don't count that. Uh, one thing you might have noticed pretty much right away is there's like this slight discoloration on the blade um, that runs across it and it did come like that. Um, that's not something I did obviously. Um, so some people might not like that. It didn't really bother me. Um, so I never reached out to customer service or anything like that. It's not something that I care about especially since this one's that kind of white handle which I'm expecting to kind of age and patina, I guess. Um, I don't know if that's the right word for it or just stain up because it's a white, uh, white handle. But because of that, I wasn't super worried about the discoloration here. If it was kind of a blade imperfection or it was chipped, you know, um, missing the tip, obviously I would have reached out, but it was nothing like that. And so, um, not something I'm super concerned with. Um, the other thing about this one is the action's just not quite as good on it. Um, it's, uh, when I disengage the lock, it doesn't like fall shut unless I really shake it. Um, so a little bit stiffer um, there. And then the detent's a little bit lighter. So this one is a little bit easier to fail um, than the other one. As you can see, I can like kind of, 
I mean, obviously, uh, you can fill both of them, but this one's a little bit easier to fill. Um, one nice thing, though, is the detent's a little bit lighter, so I am able to do this with my um, index finger where I can't really with the Ryu. I can sometimes. Um, yeah, see, it's like super tight. Um, so I can't sometimes, but the detent's super heavy on that one, um, which is nice uh, because it's less likely to fail on you. Um, once you get it out, it's going to come flying out of there. And then this one is kind of like drop shutty where this one isn't really at all. Once you get it past just like that first initial point it is, um, but for whatever reason it kind of sticks on the back end there. Um, again, not something I'm super concerned about. Um, I'll probably take it apart after this video and um, see if I can fix that up and just kind of tighten it up a little bit. And uh, again, not super worried about it either way. Um, Again, no, it is a $45 knife and it's manufactured overseas, so um, this being my first damn designs knife, so I do see a little bit difference in quality, obviously, between the two knives, um, which obviously isn't something you want to see, but I do feel like um, for $45, either one of these is still, um, I'm not upset about kind of where the ghoul is at, um, both with the discoloration or just kind of that super light detent and uh, action. Um, but for sure the Ryu is a little bit on um, what you hope most of the examples will be and um, we'll, we'll see soon. I do, did order, as soon as I got these I was having so much fun with them that I ordered two of their kind of like mid-size knives and um, I got both of those in the G10 as well, different colors. I think I got tan and jade I want to say. Um, so definitely excited to kind of see what that's like, what the fit and finish is like, and uh, if this was kind of an outlier or kind of what you would expect. There, it did fall shut a little bit. Um, or what you'd expect. But um, from what I've seen, I think the Ryu is closer to what you'd normally expect from these. Um, everyone that I've, every video I've watched on these and everyone I've talked to that has one um, is super happy with them. So I think this is, again, kind of an outlier, and I'm hoping that uh, that'll... Um, tighten up a little bit once I take it apart and get it lubed up and everything. Um, so we'll, we'll see you there, but um, super happy with both of these, especially at $45. They're just kind of super fun knives. Of course, um, as I mentioned, I did order two of their mid-size knives, so excited to check those out. And those are also really, really reasonably priced. Um, again, I got the G10 version, so I think those range from like $60 to $75, I want to say. And um, depending on that, how that goes, I'll probably order a titanium version with the S35VN of one of them. Um, obviously a different model, but um, I do want to check out kind of their higher tier ones at some point, premium materials. And those do get a little bit pricier, but I feel like really, really reasonable still. I think 160 to 175 or so, which is really reasonable, I think, for the titanium scales. And... Um, Definitely excited to check that out as well at some point. But let me know if you have any damn designs, um, what your experience has been with them. Um, for me, I'm super happy with them at $45. Um, I don't think I have a, a sub $50 knife that's as fun as this. Um, really enjoying the front flipper, the action, um, and really just the look of these knives, honestly, um, which is you know, obviously just as important um, when you have as many knives as a lot of us do that design is one of the kind of big things. And uh, obviously you want function and you want something that's a little bit like indestructible, um, but you also just want cool looking things and fun things to that fidget with and um, that just kind of bring you joy um, outside of having their whatever utilities that they have. So um, yeah, excited about these knives, definitely excited to have found this brand. I don't think they really sell on any retailers. I think I had heard somewhere that they were selling on Amazon for a while. Um, I didn't see any when I did a quick search. Um, I mean, it wasn't very comprehensive, um, but in the first couple results when I entered damn designs, I didn't see any. So, um, and they definitely aren't really on like Blade HQ or Knife Center or SMKW, any of the kind of big retailers. Maybe they're on some of the smaller retailers. I didn't do a lot of research, just, uh, just um, my early observations is that it seems like the only place you can really get these are on damndesigns.com or 
kind of on the secondhand market. Um, I see a lot of them on like knife swap on Reddit or on eBay, but um, as far as like commercial retailers go, um, it's really just their website as far as I can tell. Um, so definitely I'll put a link down in the description to their website. They have some cool other things um, besides knives like fidget toys and beads and that kind of stuff. Um, so if you're into that sort of thing, um, they have some really cool ones. Uh, so definitely check them out. But yeah, let me know in the comments below if you have any damn designs knives, what you think of them, um, if you're considering getting them, and uh, what you think of these two. But as always, thanks so much for watching. Um, if you're not already subscribed, be sure, sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I'm closing in, probably by the time you see this video, I'll be right around the 250 subscriber mark where I'm planning on doing my first uh, couple giveaways. Um, I had uh, one of the subscriptions that I do out here on the channel sent over some swag for a giveaway, so the next time I do that video, um, I'll definitely do a giveaway. I'm thinking I'll probably break it up into two because they sent quite a bit. And uh, that way, a couple more viewers are able to, to kind of enjoy that giveaway. So I'll probably do it over the next two for that subscription. And then one other company um, that sent over a product for review also agreed to do a giveaway. Um, that one will be shipping directly from them. But uh, definitely be sure to subscribe so you can see get notifications of when those videos go live. I'll be sure to put it in the title. So it'll be pretty clear that uh, those videos are the ones that contain the giveaways. But super excited to be... Um, doing my first giveaways just because um, I kind of missed the early milestones. Um, they snuck up on me. Uh, obviously, that's amazing. I'm so thankful for everyone's support, um, but was not prepared so early to kind of hit those milestones. And so I wanted to make sure I was prepared early for 250 um, so I can do these first couple of giveaways. So super excited about that. Stay tuned. Um, they'll be coming out in the next week or two. Um, but as always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell regardless. And uh, as always, I hope you have a great one.